that's a huge mess, isn't it? That's definitely not my style, what you can see here on my table. And that's what I would like to show you today. When you need to create something that is totally behind, far away from your comfort zone, but uh, maybe you do have custom uh, custom order and you are creating a journal for someone and that someone will ask you to create a journal with the special papers they like. And it's something what you actually don't like. You, you are not comfortable with it. That's what you can see here. A long time ago, I uh, bought a magazine and the magazine came with this little pack and inside were these papers, these beautiful cutouts and some stamps. And it's sitting on my drawer in my shelf for such a long time and I was thinking how I will use them. I don't like them at all. Not even one of these papers speak to me. So what I will do with them and if someone will ask me, use exactly these papers and create a journal for me with this. A long time ago, I would have a very hard time to work through to this. And I think I will say no, but not because I will feel uncomfortable, but because I know I want to make the person very happy with that journal. I want to create something what they will treasure, what will not end up in the bin. And uh, I will be happy that they are happy. And a, a long time ago, I will say no, just because I will, I will don't know how to go through. But I learned through to that time what I can do and how I can adapt it, how I can change it, but still keep the papers they want. So what I will do if someone will ask me to create with these paper, with exact these papers, I will keep them for decorative elements. I will have a look on these papers and try to find what these papers have kind of together, what is um, making them to work together. And if you will notice on each of these papers, there is a little bit of green. Each of them, they do have green color. So I will go to have a look in my stuff. If I do have some uh, solid background papers, with the green color which can speak to each of these patterns and i'm talking about solid color just because here is so many patterns so many different patterns and if i will try to find some patterned uh, design it will make even bigger mess in my head and it will make me so uncomfortable so solid color green color which can speak to all of them. If I will don't find any green color, which can speak to all of them, I will go to have a look to my stuff. If I do have some ink pad, which can possibly work with all of these. And I will create my own papers with, you know, with this ink pad and distress the papers, maybe very heavily to make the, this color on full paper or just the edges that, that I will work through uh, when I will be creating and then uh, I will definitely combine these papers with loads of vintage papers. I do, <laughs> I do have uh, put together some basics for my signatures. There are envelopes with kind of like flip outs, like small envelopes, uh, glued to large envelopes. I'm going to quickly show you what I, just very easy, very easy way, okay? Some book page, a little ephemera. This is a C5 envelope. Here was bottom and here is that loaded side. I think it's called C, like Charlie 5 envelope. So that was base. I cut it, uh, I fussy cut out this end here and then I folded this side. On that envelope this i'm keeping as it was and on the flap i glued this envelope which has flap here so i used the bottom of that envelope to reinforce this flap that was all i did here and i do have one uh, tea dyed ephemera with that stenciling and splatters on it so that's in this and it's a repeating i choose for this one kind of like a repeating pattern uh, if you are working with some papers, you are not feeling comf comfortable with it. Uh, the good is to choose some pattern, so you will have a little bit easier work on the journal. And then also choose the pattern from 
those papers I will show you what I mean so here in those smaller ones I do have again part of some printed ephemera with splatters then I do have DL envelope which is this one this is DL envelope so I just open it the flap and fold it to the envelope half I don't have it uh, decorated yet I just you know place it the way I want then I do have little small strip uh, like ephemera ticket and linen paper and this is actually repeating all the way exactly same again this C5 envelope with some ephemera with extra you know extra envelope as a flap so it's a repeating uh, now it's time to create my own uh, background papers so I will take the col color I choose and for these papers I said there is a lot of green I don't mean that they are not all green but the green color is in every single one of them so I'm gonna be choosing the green color and because I'm working in vintage style so the next color will be this one so sandstorm for vintage uh, look and this is green topaz for that greenery and the way how I will do it uh, I will take full ink pad And one paper I can do just with green. And I can make it this way. Or I can take also that sandstorm and add the sandstorm here and there. And because these papers, uh, these papers, these inks are that Spectrum Noir, and I already saw a few times how well they do work with the water, I would definitely try it here as well. So I will spray the paper and I will watch what these inks can do. Then I will take another paper and do another, you know, another pattern. Oh, this is actually so cool. Look, look at that. <laughs> Or I can do uh, like water spa, colorful spa, and dip my papers. Oh, that will be awesome! Okay, I think I'm gonna do the, do it this way. I really like this. Okay, this is winner, 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 chicken dinner. I think I hit that many times. <laughs> oh, look, that looks like spine. And the backside, you know, backside of the body and spine here. Ha, <laughs> good. <laughs> so I'm going to do it probably this way. I like it most. This lightweight, uh, beautifully greenery paper. So I'm going to do all of them this way. So as I said, I do have uh, kind of sorted these. I also created my background papers. Look how beautiful they are once they are dried. So all kind of kind of light green color, which is great. So I added this uh, these sheets into these pockets, into that DL envelope, just reinforce the back backside. I do have everything distressed now with. Uh, the seal brown ink which I'm gonna be using through to all that journal and I placed on this magnetic sheet these dies uh, specimen window uh, window for small frame one tap another tap this is that slot uh, slot pocket kind of ish this 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 and this and this one are from Elizabeth crafts crafts uh, design dies from planners essentials this one it's Marian Design Die, I think. I will try to find the names with the numbers, but these are Elizabeth Crafts designs. This is Marian Design. I will I will have a look. 
and this one, this topper for tax. And I did uh, cut out all those sheets exactly same. I do have just these sheets, so I did cut, cut them out exactly same way. And I will try to use every single bit and piece of these sheets. So I'm gonna show you what I do have from one sheet. I do have one tag. I do have inside from frame. I do have this strip, another strip. This one is from here. I do have this slot uh, die. This one is topper for tag. So it's oh, it should be folded here. And I can slide there some card and create beautiful topper for tag. This is another strip from this slot. Then I do have that specimen window. This one. Uh, then I do have this tag. I do have this big window with the with this beautifully cutted card. And I do have this off cut. This one, I can still use some cutouts, you know, some uh, maybe circle punches and create circle punches, or I can use these cutouts somehow. I will definitely try to use as much as I can. So every these single pieces, I'm going to distress with same inks, which means sandstorm, uh, kind of everywhere, and then edges with that uh, seal brown. And then I will try to incorporate these little pieces, including this one. This I will probably, this I will keep as it is and add it somewhere like a bigger strip. So, <laughs> I'm not done totally, but I will show you what I made, what I created. So uh, I somehow messed up with the first page. Usually I don't do just this simple pocket here. But you know, this was uh, concentrating how to spread these un uncomfortable colors or papers. So here, what I have done in the background is a book page. So I use this strip of that crazy paper as a pocket. Then I used... Uh, one of these die cuts I created from same paper as a tuck, tuck tap. So I use it to create one tap and I decorated pretty much a lot of that crazy paper with vintage, uh, vintage image. That way I broke down the paper. I kind of cover it, but it's still visible for me. It's a little bit more comfortable to work with it. It doesn't take full page and it's uh, much more easy to you know, to make it visible, but not too much. I used kind of similar color decoration here, and I'm thinking to add here a little bit more, maybe some sequins or maybe some number, some little die cut, something like that. So very next spread, I try to put same color, which I used, same paper, which I used for this die cut. I try to use it here as a decoration. Also from those hexagon decorative elements, I used one with similar colors. And in the background, I put that green color to kind of, you know, to again, to make it softer. So that crazy paper, which I would probably never use, usually. <laughs> so it's now making a beautiful decoration. It's visible, but it's not too much. It's not um, screaming on me and I, in the and it doesn't make me uncomfortable. And here on this book page, what I did from the start, uh, I did that uh, layering stamping. So first I stamped the, uh, the calligraphy stamp. Then I placed my template of that calligraphy stamped over it and I stamped these clocks. Both are uh, La Blanche stamps. Then I made stenciling over it and I let that dry. I had this these prepared for a long time, so now I just use, use them. But this I did when I decorate that book page. And now what I did, I used these three strips. They are from that slot, uh, slot thingy. 
where is that slot thingy i can't see it right now from this slot thingy so i had these little strips so i placed them in that stenciling kind of ish then i use this uh, lace which goes through to that old journal same lace so i used a strip of that lace to cover two of them a little bit and i use this uh, decorative uh, hexagon and here on that frame to uh, to make uh, the color the the pattern of that paper a little bit more softer and not that crazy i don't know so i used uh, again same strip just with the green color because here i made background uh, background frame from that green paper I made like watercolor paper I made so just one strip uh, of that green color here this one it's off cut from my uh, from these envelopes when I created the tabs somewhere so one off cut from these envelopes again the lace and on the top again one hexagon and uh, it's holding with this extension i did fussy cut out oh, fussy cut out i did cut out with the die that frame and then i glued between this die and between this die i, gl I glued extension of this paper and just glue it down so it's holding that frame and all together it makes a really beautiful spread and when i do have that patternet paper here and I do have that patternet paper here. It makes really beautiful spread on the page. And it doesn't make me crazy or <laughs> make my feelings upset that I had to use or I did use these papers. And here again, a little bit of that uh, pink paper here. So I decided to put uh, that pink paper here again. And again, I did mix that with that green paper. And again, I tried to use as much less as I, as I can that still keeping that paper here and a lot of brown paper around a lot of brown I mean you know coffee dyed tea dyed paper and also I didn't do these splatters everywhere I want you to notice that these splatters makes everything looks much much better in the back side you will see uh, like here it's not bad but it looks kind of plain instead of here where I do have those splatters and it's kind of similar if you will notice it's kind of similar I do have here this frame I do have that frame here I do have a few strips and I do have a few strips here and I do have this hexagon and I do have hexagon here so the spread it's quite similar but here it looks like very plain and I'm gonna add there those splatters so you will see that that uh, you know another another decoration will make it even better here i'm still thinking um i wanna use something here it's it's just that uh white paper white white stripped paper i uh, distress it with sandstorm so that's it in the background again one of these strips from slots and again end from the envelope where i have created these tabs so these off cuts i saved and i use them here as a decoration and again lace but still it is like it's missing something so i'm still deciding which of these i want to use here maybe we'll go for these blue ones i will see and again i added uh, in the background some vintage decorative uh, ephemera it makes everything much more I don't know how to say that much more better this shouldn't be here because here I do have and again here on this spread I kind of concentrated to have you know colors which are matching together and again as uh, as many those tea dyed papers book pages uh, as many as I can in that spread to make those papers not less visible <clears throat> but less destructive I guess if I may say that this way and here again you know uh, one of these papers and in the background I do have ephemera so for me that ephemera it's helping me to feel a little bit better about these crazy colors which I will usually don't use 
and here yeah here I did just a little spread I didn't have too many too many of these papers so you will don't see too many uh, in use but uh, you know just to show you how you can spread it in your journal if you have to work with papers which um, which doesn't speak to you and you have to choose somehow to add them to your journal just try to separate them to, to the small decorations like uh, clusters like this clusters like this on the end of your paper so try to think what will what will be possible for you to kind of have it there and here you can see that it's kind of plain even it does have all these layers those strips lace and this hexagon but it's still kind of plain so what I would use I would use my uh, first I would use the marker and I will definitely do that uh, uh, doodling because I found it a uh, very enjoyable first of all and it does make beautiful effect of course if I will have here uh, stitching sewing so I will don't have to make this uh, doodling part because that sewing it's very you know um, very decorative so I will don't have to make uh, doodling parts but if I don't have them uh, don't have the sewing here I would definitely go for that doodling and then just splatters and it doesn't have to be on all the paper I would probably choose just spots and put a little bit here and there and let it dry Here again, I know I didn't use too many of these papers, but as, as I said, I didn't have too many. So to, <laughs> to make at least something. And here again, beautiful spread. There is everything like before, lace, layers of little papers, but still it looks kind of plain. So uh, here I'm going to keep it as it is. I'm not going to do doodling. I do have doodling here around. So I'm going to just add the splatters. Here. Here. And here. And I'm going to let it dry as it is. I'm going to flip it over. Here I try to concentrate on the yellow underneath. Here we have that kind of yellowish background paper so I have created strip as a pocket same I did on that uh, this is next uh, next signature so I had this signature done and I was thinking what I can put here and make it kind of work so I found this and it does have nice beautiful color and I found this one it does have beautiful and kind of yellowish color color so that's why I put here that yellowish paper and I mixed this pattern here with these layouts to kind of make it work all together. And again, all these layouts, all these little strips, little clusters to make sure that paper will be there. But it's kind of, you know, it's just small partitions which are helping me to adhere paper. But do not make that paper um, be destructive. Yeah. And this one is another one. And again, these little spreads, little clusters. I need to add here something. Same here. And here you can see I do have little splatters. And it uh, it looks immediately a little bit more busy, but not too much. So that's why I like it. And here we are without doodling around and without splatters. So I would totally go for both of them. Do some doodling and very easy, you know, something just to draw around the edges of that paper. Like this and of this one. Oh, I do have to do it here. Like 
Okay. And little splatters. Yeah. And I'm gonna keep it this way, just little splat splatters. And that's done. Here I do have this kind of like pinkish uh, color. So I used pink color here as well. I'm still thinking if I could add here this color, but I don't have it anymore. So I'm gonna keep it somehow this way. Here again, you know, the little uh, slot slot die with this and I do have that uh, crazy color in the background so it will be visible I do have here that hexagon it will be visible but not too much and I think this one it's last spread yes so here I do have that slot with similar color same pattern I do have underneath but again just like frame so the pattern it's visible but it doesn't take over the page and here you can see another spread that I do have there, that crazy uh, colored paper. I'm not saying that they are ugly, not at all. They are really beautiful papers, actually, really beautiful. But for me, all these colors, it's just something... If I will have to work with these papers, I will take these papers separately. Uh, every single one for one journal. Just one of these papers for one journal, another paper for another journal. I've, I've, and I will mix them just with solid, uh, solid colors probably, uh, uh, you know, if it will be the choice of me. But if you do have maybe, you know, custom order and you need to work with uh, like very colorful papers or with patterns you don't like, I think this way where you will add them on the page, but then you will broke them, break them, broke them. Oh, now I'm not sure, but I hope you know what I mean. Uh, you will cover them with some ephemeras or just tea dyed paper will do great job. Just hide them a little bit behind the, uh, behind the vintage looking paper and they will look amazing and softer and nicer. So that's all what I wanted to share. How you can work with papers... Uh, which doesn't speak to you and uh, how to kind of get through uh, to the papers when they give you a little bit harder time. I hope this was helpful. Uh, I know this wasn't kind of like proper tutorial for journal, but it wasn't about making the journal. It was more about, you know, making the spread of the, those uh, crazy papers. <laughs> Thank you so much for jumping in today. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Uh, have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful time. And I will come back soon. Bye.